Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going over my minimalist luxury makeup collection. So this essentially is a video that I thought would be fun to do. On the luxury makeup, the only luxury makeup you need. So if I could only pick one to three maximum, I tried to keep it to three per category, where I just think these are the best of the best, where I really recommend them. And honestly, I could probably get rid of all my other makeup. I am more of a creature of habit, so I tend to use the, well, I tend to just use the best of the best products. So I don't actually utilize a lot of my makeup collection, which is a big reason why I want to go through a declutter series, which I actually, I have a huge declutter pile here that I could film. It just seems overwhelming to me because I'm getting rid of so much stuff. But let's just get started. I'm going to start out with the complexion first. For when it comes to primer, I am someone that thinks that a primer is not a necessity. I think that if you have really quality skincare and you wait about 10 minutes after you apply your skincare, I don't think a primer is really necessarily a, a necessity. Unless you're someone with extremely large pores and maybe want to go in with like a pore blurring primer. For myself, I don't really have large pores or that much texture on my skin. So when it comes to primers, I really am loving this new Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream in the shade Rosy Beige. I have done a video on it. I will link it below. I'm not going to go too in depth about this because I'm not sure if this is coming to the US. And I hate to talk about a product that you cannot buy. Um, but just know that I really, really love that one. It is very blurring and perfecting. You don't necessarily need to apply a foundation over top. And I also am really loving this Say. This is the Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Glow. So there are actually two shades available, one in this lighter kind of champagne-y tone, and then there is a deeper tone available if you have a deeper complexion. I really like this because this isn't a typical primer where it's just going to add like hydration to your skin, like a moisturizer would, because then I just wouldn't think a primer would be necessary in that state, in that case. But this is a really lightweight, it's like a gel consistency. It is quite liquidy. It dries down onto the skin though. It provides your skin with this really nice soft hydration. It's not overly hydrating where you're going to look greasy and it gives just a very soft glow to the skin. So it doesn't look greasy. It doesn't look oily on the skin. It gives a very soft sheen to the skin. And I find that when I use this underneath my foundation, I don't need to go in with a highlighter over top especially if I use a lighter coverage foundation because that glow just kind of still peeks through a little bit. And I'm someone who doesn't really like highlighter. If I were to skip one um, complexion product, it would be a highlighter, but I just think this gives the most refined, beautiful glow. And then I just have one more primer. This specifically, I mostly use as a primer for my under eyes. So I use it more as a primer for my concealer. This is the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint has a very sheer pink tone to it, and it has an ever so soft iridescence. It actually really reminds me of this Say Super, the Glowy Super Gel. Um, very similar, kind of has that gel consistency. I would say, oh, they're very similar. I would say the Chantecaille one though, it remains almost a little bit shinier on the skin, like it doesn't completely set down like this Say one does. And I think maybe this say just has a little bit more of a sheen to it, where the Chantecaille one just provides more of a hydration. But I really like it under the eyes because I am someone that has dry under eyes. So for me, that provides a nice hydration if I don't go in with like a, an eye cream before I apply my makeup. Those are the other only primers that I would recommend. And then moving on to foundation, which is one of my favorite categories, which was honestly the hardest category for me to narrow down. But I thought in my perfectly curated minimalist collection, I would definitely have a sheer foundation or like a skin tint. And for me, that would be the Chanel Le Beige Water Crush Tint. I just find this so easy to apply. It's very comfortable. Um, it's not finicky to apply. It sits over well of skincare. Now I will say, if you are someone that uses a lot of silicone-based skincare, this might not work that great over top because this is a water-based product. Um, so this, again, is a water-based product, so it is composed mostly of water, but it has these little pigment beads in it, and when you apply it to the skin, the pigment beads burst, and it just gives you this very beautiful, sheer tint of color. It basically looks like you are wearing no makeup. It just gives you a little bit of a tint. So I am someone that self-tans, so this gives me a, a little bit of color on my skin, especially if I don't even want to wear a foundation. 
This is a product I utilize a lot in the summertime and the springtime when it gets warmer out and I don't want to have a heavy layer of face makeup on my skin. This is gorgeous in any sort of humidity or hot weather as well because it does kind of set down on the skin so you don't necessarily need to set it down with powder and it just is that type of product that lasts really well in the heat because it doesn't settle, it doesn't crease, it doesn't fade away, it doesn't move around. It just sits on the skin very beautifully, but this is like ultra, ultra sheer coverage, like what I said, a no makeup makeup type of product. But definitely this is the product that I would pick for my sheer coverage. And then I also think it's important to have something that's a medium coverage. that's more for every day um, that you can use for work. If you do want to run errands, but maybe you want it to look a little bit more put together, than just having a sheer tint of coverage on. So the first product I wanna mention is this Dior Super Potent Serum Foundation. I wear the shade 3N. I could probably use the shade 2N as well. 3N's like a tad too dark, but I know 2N would just be a little bit too light. So I'm right in the middle, but I love this foundation. It is the perfect, I wanna say it's light buildable to a medium coverage. Your skin still looks like skin. It just lets your complexion shine. It really enhances your natural beauty. It doesn't cover up the skin where it looks heavy on the skin at all, but it does give you a little bit more coverage than something like the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. I just love the way this sits on the skin. I love how it sets on the skin. It gives me that perfect coverage. It gives me that perfect finish. It's that perfect finish um, between it's not dewy and it's not matte. It's a perfect in between. It's like a satin finish. We're very velvety on the skin. I absolutely adore this product. It just works well in any sort of climate as well. I can use it when it's really hot out, but I can also use it in the winter time when my skin is extremely dry. I just highly, highly recommend this product. And I know a lot of you guys will still ask about the Chanel Sublimage, the Sans Detente. I love this one just as much. I feel like the Dior one just wins a bit above this Chanel one though. I'm not really sure why I I love it all year round as well, but I think when it comes to the very, very hot months when it's like scorching and your face is melting off, this is when this product just can be a little bit too shiny for me, just in those cases. But again, it works well all year long. Very beautiful, medium coverage. I say it has a little bit more coverage than this Dior. Um, but they are very similar products. This um, Chanel one just has a teensy bit more coverage. Um, which is why I think the Dior wins just by like a sliver, just a hair. But if you're someone that has maybe more mature skin or you are very, very dry, then this Chanel Supermage is a good option. And then I also feel like having a fuller coverage foundation is important in your curated collection or in my curated collection because a full coverage foundation is something that I don't use all the time. I mostly use it when I'm like going out for dinner or there is a special occasion when I want to just look super perfected. But if you are someone that just wants one foundation, actually choosing a fuller coverage might be the best option because with a fuller coverage foundation, you actually can get the most out of it. You can actually manipulate a fuller coverage foundation the most. With a sheer coverage foundation, you can't really build this up. Like you don't wanna apply 10 pumps of this foundation because then it will start, I mean, I don't know if this product could ever look heavy, but when you are using lighter coverage products, you don't wanna go in with like 10 pumps of foundation to get that medium coverage or that full coverage. It would be better off to buy a full coverage foundation and then you can manipulate it more by either adding a moisturizer to that product and then you can really sheer it out on the skin or you can just apply a teensy, teensy bit of that product and again, really shear it out with a brush. My favorite kind of product would be this Shiseido brush to really shear that out onto your skin. And if you buff that product into your skin really well by applying just like the tiniest bit of product, you can actually get a light coverage from a full coverage foundation. And because you're using such a minimal amount of product, it's actually going to look very skin-like. So. If I were to recommend one product to you, it would be a full coverage foundation, and then it would just be manipulating that fuller coverage foundation so that you could get a sheer coverage from that full coverage foundation. You could also get a medium coverage from that fuller coverage foundation by the way you apply it. And then of course you could get a fuller coverage foundation application from that product as well by just applying it in a normal way. But I just think a full coverage foundation is kind of essential for me. And for that, my absolute favorite one has been this Clay de Poe Radiant Cushion Foundation Dewy in the shade 030 Medium Ochre. This was recently released from Clay de Poe. It just was recently released in Canada. And I tried it out and was super duper impressed by it. 
on initial application. It gives you the most beautiful satin finish. Um, it definitely is more of a satin finish. It doesn't lean dewy, but it also doesn't leave matte on the skin. Even though it is called the dewy foundation, it's not dewy at all. Like it doesn't look oily, it doesn't look greasy. It doesn't even look dewy on the skin. It gives you more of a satin finish, but the coverage is beautiful because again, it is that medium buildable to full coverage, but you can share this out as well. I have done that and got a very beautiful light skin like, um, it's a light coverage, but a skin like effect when I really just buff it into the skin, it is gorgeous. And it has the most blurring capabilities to it. Your skin looks very blurred and soft focus and beautiful. So if you have any texture on your skin, this is going to glide over that texture beautifully. If you have any pores, this would be a great foundation as well. Clay Depot just has some like magical ingredients that they put in these complexion products that really just blur the skin. So this has become an instant favorite. I have used it quite a bit since I got it because again, I can get different coverage levels out of this foundation and it wears really well in the heat as well without it becoming too dewy because I was a little bit nervous about this, that fact because it is called the dewy foundation. But again, it didn't look overly radiant. It wasn't sliding off my face. This has great longevity to it. It doesn't fade away or crease or look weird at the end of the day. It just always remains beautiful on the skin. So I can't recommend this one enough. That would definitely stay in my minimalist collection. When it comes to concealer, I'm honestly pretty picky with concealers. So there's only really two that I could mention. And this one might come as a surprise to you because when I did my initial review of this product, I left a note saying that I didn't really like how it wore. It kind of creased a little bit by the end of the day. But this has become my new favorite concealer and it has kind of replaced my Dior um, Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This is the Givenchy. Prism Libre Skin Care and Concealer. I wear the shade N250, and this is a multi-purpose corrector. I actually love this product, so I take back what I said in my initial review when I left that comment, because it's really weird. I feel like when I first tried it out, I didn't really like, it was creasing a little bit, but I almost feel like the first time I opened it, it was maybe a little bit more liquidy, but then the next time I tried it, I think I tried it again like three days later, Maybe the concealer kind of like dries out a little bit when you first open the applicator. But when I tried it the next day, and I've tried it days and days since then, this product has really grown on me. It sits way better on my under eyes than initially applied, and it does not crease at all. And it also doesn't separate or fade away. So I'm not sure what happens to this once you open it. That can happen with some formulas where once it's opened it for a little bit, it performs a little differently. Sometimes it performs worse, but um, other times you get lucky and it performs better once it's been opened for a little bit. And this for me, it actually performs way better once it's been opened for like a week. And I love this concealer and it is a multi-purpose concealer because I can use it under my eyes, but I can also use it all over the face and it performs beautifully as a facial concealer. This is why I love this Dior Forever Skin Correct is because I could use it on my under eyes and my face. It has a very skin-like finish and it was just a great product that I could use when I didn't really want to wear a foundation and I just wanted to maybe spot conceal some areas. Um, it's a great product to use with like this Chanel Water Fresh tint when you're going for that really light makeup look. This has just become kind of a holy grail for me. It has great longevity. I don't necessarily need to set it down with powder, but if I really want that perfected look, then I can set this down with powder. And it's just been performing very, very beautifully and performing even a little bit better than this Dior Forever Skin Correct. So this has now become a must have in my minimalist collection. And then I just have one other concealer that I want to mention, and that is the Chanel Sublimage Le Corrector U. This is a radiance generating concealing eye care. So it's basically a skincare makeup hybrid, which are some of my favorite products. And I really love this for the under eyes. You can see it doesn't come in the best packaging. It's very messy. It's not very portable. So that's kind of the only issue I have with this, but it looks beautiful on the under eyes. It gives a very nice medium to full coverage on your under eye area. This I don't think sits well on other areas of the face though. I think this is just specifically as an under eye concealer. It has this really nice brightness. There is this light reflecting property to it as well, but the light reflecting properties, it doesn't add a shimmer to your under eyes, but it does reflect the light in a way where it looks a little bit more blurred and just diffused. So it kind of softens up the look if you have any wrinkles on your under eyes or any fine lines. Um, my mom also really loves this concealer as well. So that is just kind of a staple 
I like it on an everyday basis. Obviously a concealer like this that just comes in this little applicator is way more easier to apply. You're gonna be able to apply your makeup a bit faster. But when I want to really pay attention with my makeup, when I want my makeup to look special, this is the concealer I use. So this is more of like a special occasion, fancy concealer I wanna say. It is a little bit more pricey, but I absolutely love that one. And when it comes to cream products, I am typically not a huge cream product fan because I have very sensitive acne prone skin. So cream bronzer has to be formulated without any of those nasty ingredients that can irritate my sensitive skin. And there are just a few products that do that for me. So the first is this Chanel anti-aging face tint. This isn't a typical cream bronzer. If you can tell, it is like a gel consistency and it almost, it's very liquidy almost. So when you apply it, it is a little bit more finicky, I guess you could say, because it is again in this jar packaging, but it is the most beautiful sheer tinted bronzer. So it does give you a very sheer tint. It is not crazy pigmented. It does give you a little bit of pigment though, as you can see. But what it offers on the skin is this really beautiful soft focus effect. So it really blurs the complexion, which I love for any of my products to do. But if I can get that with a bronzer, I think that's just very unique. Very easy, incredibly, incredibly easy to blend. If you're a beginner, this is a cream product that I would recommend to you because it almost blends itself. It is so just blendable. And I love the color of this because it is a beautiful warm tone. And this is a great multi-purpose product. So you can actually just use this all over the face, almost as you would a skin tint. So you can just apply it everywhere. And like I said, it does offer that blurred soft focus effect. So you don't necessarily need to apply a foundation over top, especially if you're someone that has really nice skin to begin with. But I do really enjoy this as a cream bronzer over top of foundation as well. I really love that underpainting technique where you apply your cream bronzer underneath almost as, as a primer. And then you go in with your foundation over top. This is a great product to use for that technique as well. I just love this. And then another newcomer is this Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in the shade 392 Soleil Tan Medium Bronze. So Chanel has obviously had their Le Beige Cream Bronzer. They reformulated this Soleil Tan de Chanel a few years back and I was very upset with the reformulation. It's still a nice cream bronzer, but I just preferred the original formula and I also did not enjoy that they added coconut oil to that formula because like I said, with sensitive skin, that's a cream bronzer I could maybe use once a week because of the coconut oil. It just irritates my skin so much and I will break out from that bronzer. But they reformulated this year's collection and they came out with these beautiful travel sizes, which I actually enjoy because it's so hard to go through that bronzer. It's just so big and so large. You typically are using it past its expiration date. I love this formula. It is gorgeous. It reminds me of the original Soleil Tan de Chanel. The formula is very creamy, very easy to apply. Beautiful, beautiful color. I would say this is definitely great for medium skin tones. It's not a super warm tone bronzer, um, but it is more on the warm tone side than it is cool toned, obviously. Um, I just, I really love this product because it is a gel bronzer, so it sits on the skin really nicely, and it's the type of bronzer that works well in the winter time, but it also works well in the summertime because it is a gel bronzer. And uh, with a lot of cream products, it does get challenging to use them in the summertime because they kind of melt off your skin, or they just melt and they look terrible after a few hours. But this just sits on the skin very beautifully. It's such a blendable formula. It is so creamy. I love that ease of application because again, it is very easy to blend. This is the type of cream bronzer that I would again recommend for beginners because of just how easy it is to apply. It does apply in a more sheer layer, I wanna say. So you can build it up on the skin and it's just very blendable and it sits on the skin beautifully. You can also use this product as well as a bronzing base, and this does have silicones in it, so it does sit on the skin really nice as well. It gives that smoothing effect. So this works great as a bronzing base. So if you were someone like me who wasn't a huge fan of the reformulation of the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel, I would highly suggest checking this one out. Very gorgeous. For powder bronzers, there was one clear winner, and if you have heard me not be able to shut up about this bronzer, this is the Valentino bronzer. I got mine in the refill because they have these in like the full packaging, but it is like way too expensive. I think it's like $290 Canadian, which is way too much money to spend. 
So you can buy these refills and this is actually called the Valentino On The Move Bronzer and this is the shade Zero Universal Bronze. I absolutely love this formula. This is a very, very unique formula because it is a powder, but it's, it's almost like a powder to cream formula. So it feels very creamy, like this powder actually feels creamy. Like it's so velvety and silky on the skin. It blends like an absolute dream. There is no patchiness. There is no, it's just so easy to use. It's incredible. It's the best bronzer that I have ever found. I have actually hit pan on it. Now, um, this is a little bit hard to get because it's been out of stock forever. I am hoping they restock soon because it has been out of stock for quite a while. But if you're looking for the best bronzer on the market, this is it. This does have like an ever so soft sheen. There aren't any shimmer particles to it, but I think the sheen comes from the fact that this is just such a silky powder. It's, it's just such a creamy formula. It's very, very impressive. The best bronzer that I have ever found. I love it. But there's also a newcomer. Actually, this is kind of a newcomer too because I did try this out this year. But this actually is another kind of surprising winner in my minimalist collection because this is the Hermes Plain Air Powder in the shade 02 Atlas. So this is the Healthy Glow Mineral Powder. I did try this out in a recent video where I was trying new makeup. And I originally said I didn't know if I thought this was worth the money because it is quite expensive. But honestly, this powder formula is so beautiful. It is a very silky powder. So it just blends onto the skin like a dream. It is Oh, it's so gorgeous. This formula feels very buttery and silky as well. This isn't like the Valentino is a powder to cream formula where it really melts into the skin and becomes second skin like. This isn't that sort of formula where it's a powder to cream, but it is just very silky and it is very blendable onto the skin and just the ease of application of this type of powder. It doesn't give you so much color payoff all at once, so it is very buildable. Again, very beginner friendly on the skin. I just think this is gorgeous. I really like this color as well. It is a warmer tone. I don't think it's too orangey or anything, unless you're someone with like very, very cool toned skin, it may be a little bit too warm for you. But I like that this is a more subtle bronzer. It's not um, a crazy distinction between like my chest and the color of this bronzer. It just gives me a very nice natural bronzed effect. And yeah, just the texture and the blendability of this formula is so impressive. So for me, I really did have to include this bronzer because I really love it. If you're looking for something that is completely matte, I'm pretty sure this is completely matte. I can't actually see any shimmer particles, but this is a great matte bronzer. The formula of this is just really kind of outstanding for a matte bronzer. Typically, I'm not a huge fan of a completely matte bronzer. I like something with a little bit of sheen, just so it looks very skin-like, but this has been just a standout bronzer, and I do really recommend it. The price tag is very high on that, but honestly, this is just such a luxurious formula that I do think that it is a staple in my luxury bronzer collection. And it is something that I would have in my minimalist makeup collection. One last powder bronzer I had to mention, it is this Sisley Phyto Touch Sun Glow Bronzing Gel to Powder. That Again, this is a gel to powder formula, so it is very skin-like. It has that quality where it melts into the skin. This does offer a sheen, so this is definitely the most shimmery bronzer of the bronzers that I recommended. The Valentino bronzer kind of sits in the middle of that matte and satin, but the sheen in this isn't like a glittery, very glowing sheen. Like it, you can't see shimmer particles on the skin, but this is just my favorite summertime bronzer because it, of how it looks on the skin. It gives you this beautiful warm glow. You can also use this as a finishing powder all over the skin just because of the texture of this product. It just sits on the skin very beautifully. So I love that one as well. And moving on to blush. So when it comes to cream blushes, I just have one to mention. And this is the, this is a new one to me. This is the LYS Beauty Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in the shade Humble. Obviously you could pick any shade. I'm just talking about this formula specifically. I'm someone, again, I try and like cream products because I do think they look very beautiful on the skin, but a lot of them break me out. But this formula does not. And I really, really love the finish of this formula because it is very easily it is very easy to work with it blends onto the skin like a dream you have ample time to work with it before it does set down on the skin and I 
think that this product does set down on the skin. For a cream blush, it is very long wearing, which is very, very impressive. So it kind of does, it is a cream blush where it melts onto the skin and looks very skin-like, but it also kind of sets down on the skin and has great longevity. So I've been using this so much just to go to the gym, and just put it on in the morning. It doesn't fade away throughout my workouts, but I also like to use this in the really hot weather because again, it's not going to fade away. Very forgiving on texture. I really, really love this formula and I love this color. It's a beautiful kind of baby pink. And moving on to powder blushes. Now, blushes are always hard to kind of narrow it down, but if I could just suggest one formula that I think is a standout and that I would absolutely keep in my minimalist collection, it is these Valentino blushes. So these are the Eye to Cheek um, dual use blush and shadow. So you can technically use these as a blush and shadow. I only use these on my cheeks though. But this formula is outstanding. Again, it is very similar to that Valentino bronzer I mentioned where the formula is incredibly creamy. It feels like a creamy powder. So it is a powder to cream formula. So this is also a product that really melts onto the skin. And did I mention that shade? This is the shade two. I forget the name, I think it's a very rose. The most beautiful bright pink shade that just gives life to your cheeks, gives your cheeks a beautiful flush. I love the formula of this because it does have like an ever so soft sheen, but again, there's no shimmer particles. It just gives your skin a beautiful glow, but it doesn't look too heavy. And because this is a quality where it's like that powder to cream, it does really melt into the skin and it does look like you've applied a cream blush with the way it sits on the skin. But this is one of the most longest wearing blushes that I have ever tried. It is incredibly long wearing for a powder formula. Blush is typically the first thing that fades. But this, your blush will literally be there all day long. So I guess the one thing I could say is you might want to be a little bit careful with um, applying it to the skin. Just go in with a lighter hand at first and you can always build it up. It almost like stains the cheeks, I want to say. But absolutely gorgeous formula. This baby pink is perfect if you're looking for a pink blush. But they also come with different colors. So I also love the shade 09, or it's just 9. Um, I forget the name of this. I think it's powder. It's like po Poudre. Um, but this is a beautiful kind of neutral pinky peach color. It's not too vibrant or anything. So it'll just give your skin just a hint of color. And then if you are more of a coral girl, this is the shade 8 Roman Sky. It is such a beautiful coral shade. Perfect for the summertime. I'm just going to have swatches everywhere. But... It's a beautiful formula, very gorgeous. If you haven't tried these blushes out, you absolutely must. A staple in my collection are these Gucci blushes. This is the Blush de Beauté Cheeks and Eyes Powder, and it is a luminous matte powder. I don't really think it's like a luminous matte. I would say it's leaning matte, but this formula is really gorgeous. This is just a typical powder blush formula, so it's not that um, powder to cream formula or anything. This is just a powder blush but I love the pigmentation of this. I love how it glides onto the skin. It gives a really nice level of pigmentation, but it's not too pigmented where it gives you clown cheeks and it's hard to blend out. The formula of this is just very impressive and I, I just love the flush of color it gives. So if you're looking for a, a matte powder blush that has great longevity, this is another staple for me. Absolutely beautiful. And for highlighter, I only have one to recommend. I tried to be wary of talking about limited edition collections but I had to. This is the Chantecaille Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. It just comes in this one shade. I love to use this as a highlighter on top, on the tops of the cheekbones, like down the center of the nose, above the arch of my brows. But I also like to use this as a buffing powder. So I'll use this Sonia G Face Wand Brush. I believe it's just called the Buffer Brush now. And at the end of my makeup application, I love to buff over everything with this powder. So I get this really seamless effect on my skin so that all my products are blended in together so there's no, no harsh lines from where you've applied one product to the next. It all just kind of diffuses into your skin and does look more natural. But this is the most beautiful highlighter because it gives the skin a very, 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 very solid glow. This does not look like a typical powder highlighter where you can actually see that shimmer on your skin. Sometimes you can see that like detectable shimmer particles. Not with this product you can't. This is almost just like a brightening powder. That's how I would kind of describe it as. There's no real generous sheen to this or anything. Like it's not going to look super wet on your skin or super glowing. It's just going to give your skin more dimension because it's more of a brightening powder than it is anything with crazy luminosity. 
But that is the highlighter that I would keep in my collection. If I wanted something for special occasions that has just like a little bit more of that glossy look, that has a little bit more of a sheen, I would choose this Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in the shade 01 Mood Light. This is just beautiful. This is that baked chalet formula. So again, it is going to have that quality where it melts into the skin. It almost looks like you've applied a cream product. It's just so beautiful. But the sheen in this product isn't too overwhelming where again, you're going to see that highlight from space. It's not going to be over the top, but it is going to give you more of that glossy finish on the skin where your cheeks kind of look wet. So I do, do love using this product for more special occasions when I want my skin to look a little bit more glossier. Now let's finally move on to the eyes. I wanted to be again very nitpicky with the eyes. So really narrowing down to like the only products that are like essentials to me that I really would want to keep in my collection. So you're not going to see, you're only going to see one palette here because this is just the palette that I utilize the most. And this is the Tom Ford Eye Color Quad Creme in the shade 36 Tiger Eye. I love this formula. This is, I, I think this is really popular right now, these kind of powder to cream products. So they apply, you get that ease of application of a powder, but they melt into your skin like a cream product would. So they look more skin-like and just give you that skin-like quality, which I think just enhances your natural beauty instead of it being like this obvious makeup look. You just get this gorgeous quality where the products kind of melt right in. Um, those are kind of my favorite things, which you can tell because I've been describing a lot of these products as that. But this is a gorgeous formula. I love this um, color quad, this quad creme formula that Tom Ford released. It's very unique. I love these shimmers because they are not obnoxious shimmers. They're not going to give you any sort of glitter payoff. They're not obnoxious. They're not too pigmented. This is very, very beginner friendly. This is mature eye friendly. This is my mom's favorite eye quad as well. And I love the shimmer in these because they're just very soft and subtle. They're great for everyday looks because there's no glitter to them. They just offer a very beautiful sheen that's gorgeous. And if you know me, I'm a huge fan of one and done eyeshadows. That's typically what I wear the most on a daily basis. Um, I'm not someone that really reaches for palettes. So I had to mention my favorite one and dones. If you're looking for something, I'm going to go from the most like sheer to the, the most intense. Starting off with this Chantecai Mermaid Eye Color in the shade Copper. This is a gorgeous, again, kind of cream. This is a powder to cream formula, so it feels very creamy. This does offer quite a bit in of intensity, more intense than that Tom Ford quad, but it gives your eyes just this beautiful glossiness. Like, your eyes look like they're wet. It's beautiful. I love this. This is kind of that, like, supermodel glow that I would kind of describe that as, where it's just such a sophisticated sheen but it's not overly glittery. Like there are no glitter chunks. There are no shimmer particles. So it's not going to look obnoxious on the eyes. It's just a very soft and beautiful, subtle makeup look that I love to use for an everyday look. This would be very work appropriate. And then stepping it up a notch, this is the Bobbi Brown. Um, these are the Lux Eyeshadows Rich Metals in the shade Melting Point. I love this shade. It's like a beautiful champagne that has like this ever so soft, rosy quality to it. It's beautiful. This offers just a little bit, it's like a one step up from this Chantecai Mermaid Eye Color. This definitely does have a little bit more of shimmer particles, but it's not obnoxious, it's not chunky. It's a very sophisticated, sophisticated and elegant shimmer. Beautiful for an everyday um, occasion look as well. But this is just an absolutely beautiful formula. This is a baked eyeshadow as well, so it has that quality where it really has that melting in effect. Um, very beautiful. This would be mature, skin friendly as well. And then if I'm looking for like a going out eye makeup look, this is when I use the Chantecai Luminescent Eye Shades. My favorite shade is the shade Lion, which is a golden copper. This definitely offers the most pigmentation and offers the most shimmer kind of, I don't want to say glitter because it's not actually glitter, but you can see more of that um, intermittent shimmer that is dispersed through, through this shadow. It is gorgeous, and I love this shade for the summertime especially because it's that beautiful golden bronze tone. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love to use this as a one and done, and it is a baked eyeshadow, so you can use these wet and dry as well. Just a beautiful finish, but again, it's not overly glittery. I think you would still wear this during the daytime. This just has a little bit more of that intermittent shimmer to it, but it is absolutely gorgeous on the eyes. 
that is a standout product and that is something that would need to be in my minimalist luxury makeup collection and oh i just have one more shadow to recommend and this is just one specific eyeshadow it doesn't look too pretty but this is the Surratt artistique eyeshadow in the shade grayish i love to just use this so typically i'll just use my bronzer through the crease and usually i like to add a little bit of this or i'll just use this as a crease color and then go in with like a one and done eyeshadow this is just a beautiful neutral toned boring matte eyeshadow so there's nothing really special about it it is a bit on the warmer side, but it's not like an orange eyeshadow or overly warm. But I really love this formula because it's that very cream formula. So very similar to the Tom Ford Eye Color Quad Creme. The formula actually is very reminiscent of one another. This is like that powder to cream formula. Really melts into the eyes. I think this would be great for mature skin. I have had, I think, two subscribers say that these crease on them. So something to be wary of if you have more more oilier skin. These eyeshadows might not work the best for you, but they work fine for me. They last all day long. And for eyeliners, if I'm looking for an eyeliner that I can really smudge out on the eyes and it's more of an eye coal, so I like to first apply eyeliner to my eyes, smudge it out so I get that nice definition on my eyes, and then I like to build my makeup over top of that. So then I'll go in with a crease color and then the lid color. Um, but for that, when I really want to smudge out my eyeliner, this Hindash Intra Eye Tone Pencil, so the shade is called Intra, it's absolutely beautiful. It's very blendable. It's this beautiful brown shade, but it does have a warmth to it. There's almost like a little bit of a red undertone to it, so I think it's just very flattering for any eye color. It will really make your eyes stand out. The formula is really nice on this because you do have ample time to work with and smudge this out. But if you are looking for something that's waterproof, that goes in your tight line, so I like to apply it to my tight line to kind of just complete the gap from where I've applied mascara to where my eyelid is. You just kind of get that awkward gap. I like to apply an eyeliner there. It's called your tight line, and um, the, my favorite eye pencil for that is the Hourglass Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. I have two shades in the shade Voyeur, which is a black, and then Cave, which is a brown, so I'll typically use the brown for more natural looks. Absolutely love these. You apply it to your tight line on your waterline and they're not moving all day long. They don't smudge, they don't budge. So these are perfect if you're looking for a waterproof gel liner. Absolutely beautiful formula. And for mascaras, so I first, my favorite eye mascara primer is this Dior Maximizer 3D. It has the longest name, Triple Action Lash Primer Serum. So this is just a serum that I use underneath mascaras. It's a lash primer essentially. But I really do think it makes a difference in how my mascara applies over top. It gives me more length and more volume. It makes my um, mascara last a little bit longer. And then my two favorite mascaras, if I'm looking for something for a daily basis mascara that I just think really enhances your natural beauty, I am loving this YSL Lash Clash Mascara. It is beautiful. It gives you length. It gives you definition. It doesn't give me as much length as the next mascara I'm going to talk about, but it gives me just enough on a daily basis. It makes my lashes look very um, fluttery, I want to say. It gives me these very feathery lashes that aren't over overwhelming. It doesn't look too dramatic. It's a great everyday mascara, and I really love this specifically because it is a brown shade. So I just think it is perfect for an everyday use. I am someone that just really likes more natural looking makeup, so this is perfect. But if I'm looking for something more dramatic for maybe an evening out, or if I just want to look a little bit more fancy, I love this Gucci mascara. This is the Le Obscure Mascara in the shade E Black. I really hope they release this in a brown shade because I would love it. But this gives you absolutely amazing length and volume. It doesn't smudge. It doesn't fade. It doesn't clump. Just a beautiful formula. And it stays consistent throughout. Mascara is usually only good for six months. It stays consistent throughout the entire six months. It's just such a beautiful mascara that I can't recommend enough. I just realized that I forgot to mention powders. So I'll quickly mention powders. The powder that I must have in my collection is the Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder. This is just my holy grail powder. I love this because it refines the look of pores on the skin. So when you apply it to your skin, it just makes everything look completely smooth and blurred and soft focus. So this is my favorite powder to finish off with. And I love it because it is a translucent powder. So it's not going to add coverage to your skin. It's not going to add texture to your skin. It's just going to set your makeup, but also just blurring your skin. If I am looking for something for like a special occasion or maybe my skin is acting up or I just want my skin to look like ultra perfected, 
Then I will use the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. This is just limited edition packaging, but it is in a permanent kind of pebble looking packaging. I do really love this just typically for more special occasions because it can look a little, I don't want to say heavy on the skin, but it is a detectable powder on the skin. Like it's not one of those powders that just blends right in and you can't see it sitting on the skin. This is a powder you can see on the skin, but it does the best job of blurring the skin as well. So if you really want that velvety looking blurred powder or blurred look, this is a powder that I recommend. If you're someone that maybe needs a little bit more coverage or concealing, then this would be a great powder to set with as well. And then I also had to mention a loose setting powder, and my favorite one is the Rodeo Glass Loose Setting Powder. So I really love this specifically for under the eyes. I will not use a pressed powder under my eyes because typically pressed powders just look a little bit heavier on the under eye area. So to get that beautifully set in makeup without it looking heavy, but it does set down the under eyes, this powder is absolutely fantastic. It does blur the under eyes. It doesn't sit in any lines or creases. Great powder if you're looking just to set your under eyes. And then moving on to lips, I had to get very nitpicky with the lips. I'm just someone who tends to wear the same lip color every day. I wouldn't care to change up my lip color very much. For the lip liner, I had to mention the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Top Lip Cheat. This is just my perfect My Lips But Better shade. I've gone through probably like six of these in, it, in the entirety of having this lip liner. Love this. It is very creamy. It is long lasting. I love it. And this Merit Signature Lightweight Lipstick in the shade Baby is that what I would pick for a lipstick, just like a typical lipstick formula. This does feel incredibly lightweight on the lips though, so it doesn't feel as heavy as typical lipstick formulas, which is what I really love about this formula. I love the color of this. I love everything about this lipstick. I don't even need a lip liner with this lipstick for just how it just sits on the lips so beautifully. I love this. And then this Chantecaille Lip Chic in the shade Patience is something that I absolutely must have in my collection at all times. I love this because it's like this pinky nude shade, but it doesn't leave too pink and it doesn't leave too nude. It's that perfect My Lips But Better sort of shade. I just love this and I love this formula as well. So I'm not necessarily just recommending this shade. I'm more recommending the formula, but I love this because it's so comfortable. It almost feels like you've just applied a lip conditioner. So it's something that once it wears off on my lips, my lips actually feel better as a result of having applied this product. So it's something I love to just throw in my bag just to touch up with as well. Love this formula. It's something that I use all the time. And then the last product is when I'm looking for something it's kind of that lipstick lip gloss hybrid formula which is kind of very similar to this Chantecaille lip sheet formula. This is the NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in the shade Fastlane. Again not necessarily just recommending this shade but I love this formula. It really reminds me of the Chanel Rouge Coco flashes. Um, very similar formula where it feels almost oily. It really melts into the lips and it's so comfortable. There's something just so special about this formula. I love the shade of this as well. My lips but better. Those are just my favorite shades to use. So it's something that I like must have. And once I go through this, I'm pretty sure I'll go through this pretty quick because it's something I just can't stop using. I throw it into my bag whenever I go anywhere because just of how comfortable it feels. I love this lip product. So highly recommend that. And for a lip gloss, honestly, I have been loving this Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm. This is a lip treatment. I think that they do offer this in different shades, but I love this. So I love to apply this before my makeup. This has replaced my lip, um, my Dior Lip Maximizers. I think this is even better. I love, love this formula. It just feels like so slick and so conditioning and so moisturizing, but it also works as a great lip gloss topper. <laughs> like I guess it is, it's supposed to be like a lip treatment, but I use it just as a lip gloss. This formula is outstanding. It is like a little messy, like not the most luxurious packaging, but I don't care because I love this formula. And then I just feel like a must-have luxury item that I really would just want to have in my minimalist collection even is this Tom Ford Lip Gloss Brilliant in the shade, or it's the Gloss Luxe Brilliant in the shade 21 in the buff. I love this formula. It's just such a luxurious feeling formula. It feels very comfortable on the lips. This looks ultra classy as well when you pull it out of your bag. This is something I love to use on special occasions because it just makes your lips look plump and special and hydrated and juicy and beautiful. I love this formula. The last product I have to mention is this Chanel Rouge Cocoa Gloss in the shade 804. Again, not specifically this shade, but this formula. 
I just think having a Chanel lip gloss is like a must have in my personal minimalist makeup collection. This formula is just a classic. It feels very comfortable on the lips. It doesn't feel gloopy or too satiny. Sometimes the things are too glossy. I don't like the way they actually sit on the lips. I just think they look a little bit too like sweaty on your lips. But this formula is beautiful. It's a typical gloss formula that is just absolutely stunning. So that is everything for my minimalist makeup collection. Obviously, this is just my personal, what I would think of my minimalist makeup collection. This might be even like too much makeup for most of you, and it is probably too much makeup for most people. But these are the products that I would recommend to anyone. These are the best of the best makeup products. And honestly, if I got rid of all my other makeup, I wouldn't be upset about only having this. Of course, I'd still miss like certain things, and there are certain things that I absolutely love and I still recommend. But these are just my absolute favorite choices from each category. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear from you some of your favorites in your collection that you would you must have in your minimalist makeup collection if you were just to create one. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.